What is going on YouTube? This is Acid Roots. I'm going to review the most recent EP by Eazy E. Basically, this project is called Impact of a Legend, and it came out in the spring of 2002. The thing about this particular project is this is one of the final projects that Eazy E kind of had just in the amalgamation of his career and that type of stuff, but it's a posthumous album, so the concept of this particular one is just the fact that apart from like Straight Off the Streets of Motherfucking Compton, which was arranged toward, apart from Straight Off the Streets of Motherfucking Compton, which was arranged towards the end of Eazy E's lifetime, which was something he managed to work on and almost complete this particular project is just kind of some spare and kind of chopped together verses as far as that's kind of concerned it just doesn't have like the real official stamp as far as that kind of goes and there's really not a ton of information upon this particular project the thing about it is, is wikipedia just has like a very short kind of paragraph about this particular project and it's been out for 21 years and there's just really been nothing more to really say about it it's just not a ton of information which is kind of odd because easy e was as large as he has it's just kind of odd there's just not more to kind of say about it but it did wikipedia does briefly say that ice cube kind of promoted this project when it first came out and that type of stuff so that's kind of the thing about it but there really weren't any singles on this project and it's just kind of a low-key kind of one that just kind of had some hodgepodge stuff as far as getting like some last leftover verses it's kind of has some stuff as far as getting some last leftover verses from easy as far as that kind of goes it it is kind of like i noticed that this notice that this kind of has like a documentary and like some music videos and it might even be like a video game or something like that there is some other stuff because it says rated t and m for mature as far as that's kind of concerned so i'm kind of curious as to what else was kind of packaged with this particular project but this album is not on spotify so you can't really tell as to what the most popular songs kind of are on here it's kind of a tricky album to find overall this is just kind of one that's just very low key but i wanted to complete easy to use full catalog so i'm going to review this one just to kind of say there is some quality on here and i do like a few of the songs actually more than half the, there is some quality on here and i do like more than half the songs on here but i just would have to say the concept about it is it's just such an awkward kind of hodgepodge of an album just because the thing about this particular thing is just the fact that easy e was kind of such a relic by 2002 it just feels like some of these kind of g-funk and early gangster rap kind of productions and just overall verses on here just feel very outlandish and ancient compared to the stuff that was going on in 2001 2002 as far as that kind of went like dr dre had revolutionized the game with chronic 2001 ice cube was doing like the friday movies and becoming a bigger actor eminem was blowing up snoop dogg was becoming a household name a lot more so there just were a ton of things that had kind of happened that just it feels like easy e sounds very isolated on this particular album as far as it kind of goes just the outlandishness of taking it back to 1994 just in a 2002 kind of time is because these productions like are decent and they do sound like something easy e might have done but i just don't think that they would have had his official stamp these are some decent ones as far as that kind of goes but i think the official stamp of easy e probably would have been that much more volatile and overall violently quality as far as that kind of goes in terms of what could have happened had he made it to 2002 this is just kind of some in-betweener kind of conduit kind of stuff that is decent and it does have some decent kind of bops on here but i just feel like the sounds that were revolutionized by way out in 2001 2002 which was seven years after easy he passed is just kind of the concept of just being able to say that it's just not it just kind of feels like a really kind of this really feels like a stretch of awkwardness just compared to some of the stuff that had changed between 1993 and 1994 and all the way out in 2002 so that's kind of the thing about it but i am going to recommend some songs on here like i said there's not really a single like I said, there's not really a single, but there are four songs out of six I recommend. So I'm going to recommend those four songs. It would be Easy, One, Two, Three, Cock the Nine, Still Fuck em, and Switches. So real, a real nice one on here is Cock the Nine. This is kind of a warm weather, out and about haze of a song, I would say. It's got an uppity tempo, but it has steadfast lyrics. So I would definitely say this is kind of one for being out on the town and just kind of being out and about as far as just... Kind of a hangout song, just in a more cityscaping kind of sense. Just the typical kind of stuff that you would get from like an NWA type tune. I mean, to keep in mind that Easy e was around back in like the late 80s and that type of stuff. It just kind of works as like an early 2000s version of some of the NWA type stuff. But like the cityscaping and kind of just more stepping out and just like Travers kind of feels for as, as that kind of goes. Just a nice one for that. Just a nice one for how that overall sort of thing kind of feels. It's a good cityscaping one. Easy one, two, three is another nice one. This is a great way to kick off the album. This is kind of a good city hopping stroll of a song. I would say it's somewhat manic, but it's just some good leery evening typical fare. I would say so. This is another one. There are some cityscaping kind of ones on here. I do feel like easy one, two, three is a little bit more kind of like a typical kind of hop and bop kind of bounce about this one. This has a little bit more bounce and overall jive towards a little bit more jovial mood. But I kind of feel like Cock the Nine is just more of like a summary kind of one. Just kind of warm weather cali haze as far as that kind of goes but both of which are both easy one two three and cock the nine are some good cityscaping kind of ones and then there's some kind of horrorcore ones on here also so 
Witches is kind of a dark horror core like creeping beat. I would say it's a cruise song, but it's in kind of a more shrill sense. I would have to say this is kind of like a creepy one that just kind of works for like a good cruising in your six four type song like Easy usually talks about. It's just a good bop for kind of driving around and traverse, but it just kind of works in more of like a horror core kind of sense. It would have been interesting to see if Easy could have really done a song like this, the type of beat that he would have chosen for something like this, because this is kind of up Easy E's alley. Easy E towards the end of his lifetime, like 93, 94 was Easy E between like 93 and 95 was starting to dab into horrorcore a little bit. And there's some brief examples of it. But I would have to say this is a pretty good example. I like the concept of getting like some cruising around horrorcore type music. It's not too often that you get cruising songs in like a horrorcore sense. That switches songs are pretty good ones. Vintage Easy E. And then still, still fuck em is a pretty good one. This is some usual antics. It's an overall good easy E song. I would have to say it's a Cali Breeze type feel and like a glaze format, I would say. And it's just a good lazy hangout. So this is definitely kind of one that works for like another city hopping sense. It's kind of like cock the nine and easy one. Still fuck em kind of works in like a city hopping kind of format, kind of like cock the nine and easy one, two, three. I would have to say just some other good ones to kind of have for just kind of stepping out. But this one kind of works as like a hangout song. This is just kind of like the usual fare for easy E where he's just kind of sprawled out and kind of like fuck the world that type of stuff is kind of in a pissed off kind of not nihilistic kind of mood like he's known for being in that sort of concept this is usually his fuck the police type attitude as far as that kind of goes this good concept to kind of get that vintage easy -E. is this kind of one and apparently like easy -E had said that this verse came out in 1995 like there's some, there's one one of these verses on here he talks about that it's 1995 so this is kind of some of the final verses that easy -E was able to do and stuff so there's some good stuff to kind of get that but this one still fuck him kind of has like a mid glaze kind of horrorcore type feel but it's also kind of some decently kind of hazy kind of cali breeze kind of sun as far as that kind of goes so this works kind of an in-betweener between stuff like cock the nine and easy one two three kind of an in-betweener between songs like cock the nine and easy one two three and horrorcore songs like switches so that's kind of the concept about it this works in that sort of sense but to talk about some of the songs i didn't enjoy talk about some songs i didn't enjoy on here which would just be ruthless life and no more tears both of these just had kind of cruddier beats that just didn't stack up in terms of the fare like i said this is just kind of some ancient stuff in terms of the productions that they chose for this particular project and it's just kind of awkward just because the sound had kind of been revolutionized and easy -E didn't really quite make it to the times of all the change that happened between like 1995 and 2002 and stuff so it just kind of feels outlandish and some of these ones that just kind of feel like more vintage 1991 1990 type california type stuff just don't really fit that well especially when the productions are just kind of more especially when the productions are more lukewarm and mediocre and stuff so that's just kind of the thing about it some of these just didn't stack up quite as well as they needed to so that's kind of the concept about it but i just look after it like there is more quality than i expected on this particular project so i'm going to go ahead and score this out me liking four songs out of six on here I mean, like in four songs out of six on this EP, I'm going to give this EP like a seven and a half out of 10. I feel like it's good enough to kind of purchase and that type of stuff. I would have to say this project just kind of irks me just because of like the outlandish changes that kind of happened in rap music between 95 and 2002. Just hearing Easy e in 2002 just kind of feels awkward just because he just doesn't fit in with like the styles of all the vast and drastic changes that kind of happened just within the seven years that had happened within that time period and it just kind of feels like easy e really feels like a relic in 2002 and that's just kind of the concept about it i mean it's good enough to kind of say that there is some good stuff but it is of course you can't really perfectly kind of pinpoint what easy e himself would have done around this time had he made it to this point so it's just kind of one of those things there are some decent productions on here i do kind of feel like some of the horror core and kind of sunny so do you feel like some of the horror core and kind of sunny city hopping type tunes do work pretty well but i just look at the concept it's just it's good but i look after i do feel like easy e's typical albums just stomp all over these this is just kind of in between type stuff if it's just more kind of in a hardcore sense where you, you absolutely need everything by easy it's some good stuff to get i would say it's good but it's not addictive essential to where you should just have to go out in like 10 degree weather or something like that to get this particular music this is kind of the concept about it but it is good enough to say that it's pretty solid that's this kind of thing so in terms of the social score i'm going to give the social score like a five out of ten just because these are decent songs on here and there's some solid kind of hangout songs as far as that kind of goes but i just kind of feel like there's a lot of guests on here that are kind of more pedestrian and just did i question who these folks actually are i've never heard of these folks before wikipedia doesn't even list who they are you have to look on youtube to really figure out who these cats are and stuff so it's kind of you don't get a ton of easy e really these are just verses that he had left around in his lifetime that was just something just to kind of throw on here but i do look at the concept it's not really as if 
it just kind of feels more hodgepodge as far as that kind of goes. But I look after it. I look after just being able to say that it has some kind of decent bops on here, but it's just not like the usual feral bite that you would get from a full blown. It's not like the full blown feral bite that you would get from an Easy album where he'd have actually completed it and that type of stuff. So this is kind of the thing to say about it. But in terms of the future, that's difficult just because Easy E is deceased. So this is the most recent project he's done, unless there's like some other posthumous stuff that I'm pretty sure I don't think that there is. This is like the most recent one. So I just would kind of had to say it's solid enough and it's kind of it's a good purchase in that sort of sense. But I still feel like it would have been interesting to have seen. This is a decent project, but of course it just makes you curious as to what these song topics and verses would have sounded like had Easy actually been able to complete them and that sort of thing.